Hello, Peter. We are live Hello. now. Wonderful. Oh, yes. So we made seven. it again. That's a great number. There's seven. It, it's a magic number, like told in the stories, in the fairy tales. Seven <laughs> yeah, is an exactly. important number. Let me exactly. think of... There are there is like I have a fairly you know Peter that fairly tales in the German language fairly tales is the same word for story Geschichte so if it's a fairy tale or if it's a story there is no difference about it fairy tales so, and stories they use the same word in German that's actually yes so if you tell me a story it's like also you tell me a fairy tale or you can say, yeah, there is like some specific word, but I just thought about it and then I thought about my my cultural heritage, you know, and I just thought <laughs> we invented the stories. There is like one uh, pair of brothers that I would like, like to show you here um, that is from Germany. Look, they hey. look, that's not us. That's not us. So I was exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you know them? I, I I can imagine. Yes, now I see the name. Yeah. Grimm. Grimm. The famous Grimm brothers. The Grimm brothers. I don't know if they had like a grimy face or something. Yeah. <laughs> this could be a <laughs> or thumbnail. No, but like this is what it's about today. Like supercharge your storytelling. Oh, so we already see that. And so you are the expert for stories and uh, yeah the idea of course came into my mind like the the fairly tales and the grim brothers um so we actually have stories for just a while some some while ago if we say so if you say it like this we already used it in the old times <laughs> right around, around the campfire <laughs> so why is a story so important why is it so effective, say it like this? Yeah, it is effective because it opens a loop in the psychological underflow of the human psychic. Mm -hmm. You want to know what happens. You yeah. know, once upon a time, so and so was living a normal life and he had a challenge. And then you're like, what's going to happen to him? I don't know why we're programmed like that, but we are. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we want to know if, if, if there's something at stake in the beginning, the character, he has to overcome this problem, otherwise he's gonna, something bad is going to happen. So something's at mm -hmm. stake. If something's at stake, we want to know what's, what's mm -hmm. going to happen. Is he going to win or is he going to lose? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and also there is this, so if we are back in the modern age, so away with all the stories and the fairy tales, but we are mm. bombarded with information every day, yeah. right? Every yeah. second. Our, and we're adding to it right now. Our brain, of course, has to decide, is this relevant or is it trash? Can mm. I get away with it? And I think that's the idea that we are talking about in storytelling as well, right? Because the brain can immediately hook. So I got this from you, Peter. So you mentioned the word hook. You can immediately hook in and think, okay, this is something for me or this is not something for me. If it's something yeah. for me, I'm willing to listen in more, right? Yeah. Is the character interesting for me? Is what's at stake interesting for me? Do I identify? with this at all you know all the there's so many different movie genres out there is it science fiction or is it romance you know and different people have different interests so if you're telling a story in business you know is it something that's going to interest the ceo is it something that's going to interest the side hustler you know immediately you get to the stakes when you're explaining your product or service as the beginning of the story mm -hmm. I have to really congratulate you, Peter, because I think you are an absolute master about this. So you seem to have this, um, even though maybe you haven't like gotten all the grim fairy tales like I as a young boy, but you <laughs> like when was your start when you thought story storytelling, there's more to it. 
were you always a writer or like when when did it start? actually no um to be honest with you and funny enough i just did a kind of a particular personality test yesterday something called karios something developed by german companies big Again, mercedes is using this for their okay. employees but anyway it rated me as actually quite low in communication like as a decision making tool my communication skills are rather low so that being the case i search by nature i search for easy hacks and shortcuts to communicate mm -hmm. uh, and when i found the story brand framework made famous by donald miller in his book story brand i immediately recognized this is a very powerful framework to efficiently communicate something i'm always about efficiency because it should be fast and effective that means efficiency mm -hmm. Wonderful. So and I really got so into it at, at that point. Let's, some let's years dive ago. into it. You know what? I prepared something. <laughs> so we try to keep it simple here, but this is helping us as well to. So we already seen the framework. This, the framework. This is, so what's it about? This it's is, the Story Brand Framework from Donald Miller. This is the Story Brand Framework in um, terms of the hero's journey, it's called, in other words, or basically the framework that every famous story starting from Grimm Brothers up to modern day Hollywood has to use. If they miss one of these points that you've had here in orange, if they miss one of those points in, in their story, in their movie, it's going to flop. They're not going to make money with it because nobody's going to be interested in it because it's going to be boring. So <laughs> you, you have to necessarily touch on each one of these points in order to have an effective uh, communication framework. Um, and I guess we can go through it shortly. Why yes, not? of, so co of course. In... Where do we start, Peter? Where is the... We start, start by introducing the character. And, and this character part is actually the most uh, interesting because, especially in the business world, <laughs> because most businesses think that they are the hero, think that they have to present themselves as a hero so that people will trust them, will look up to them, you know, will want to do business with them. Uh, and, and this is actually completely false. Why? Because in everyone's own vision of the world, the most important person in, in their life is themselves. <laughs> so they are actually the hero of their own story. And as uh, you and I, as we go through life, we're confronted with uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. And we, all we want to really do is overcome those challenges. Okay. So, so most important lesson for today, I would say one takeout. If you take this out for your, <laughs> for, for your marketing as of the next week, as of now, it's a <laughs> tough truth. You are not the hero. You are, you are not the hero, but what you are is the guide. Yeah. And, uh, the guide, yeah, got a little bit of fan go. jangle it there. The yeah. guide Good. is without the guide, you have a very weak story because a hero, uh, who has a problem to overcome needs something outside of themselves to push them to the next level. The guide could be as simple as a neighbor or a friend saying like, Hey, why don't you do this? You know, like I remember when I was 18 years old. So here we go. Here's a story. Once oh yeah. Upon a time, Listen, I, I was look, look how old. I was a little bit like, Oh, yeah. And, and, okay. You here's see? a story. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Okay. Tell me your story. <laughs> 18 years old, I so was... when you, two years ago. <laughs> I was bored sitting in my parents' house and I wanted to go and travel mm -hmm. uh, around Europe. I lived in America at the time. I didn't really like America. I wanted to go to Europe mm -hmm. and I wanted to go traveling in Europe. And I would, that was, uh, this might date me, but this was before Facebook, long before Facebook. Oh. Uh, and we had like, I don't know how we, anyway, there was, we had forums that how you connected with people on social media was basically through forums. Uh, 
mm-hmm. and MySpace. Oh. We had MySpace. Yeah. So oh, I was right. just chatting with someone that I didn't even know that did really, I mean, like just kind of met, you know, just some random person on the internet. And I was telling them like, yeah, I want to go travel in Europe. And they were like, well, then just go. <laughs> and at that moment I had a realization like I, I can just go, I will just go. <laughs> yeah. And I did go a few months later. So that, that person was basically a guide for me in this particular situation. Uh, and in terms of business, in terms of companies, if you position yourself as the guide, as a qualified guide, which is, you know, now you're positioning yourself as a hero, but if you more speak to your customers that they're the hero and you're going to help them, you're going to give them a plan. Now we move on to the fourth point. You give the hero a plan. This is what we're going to do to help you reach success and then call them to action. Now, you know, go and do it. This can be as simple as, you know, buy now, uh, start now, book a call, you know, <laughs> stuff mm-hmm. like this. These are calling them to action, but these CTAs or uh, call to action buttons, they only really work if the hero feels understood and if they feel that you're a qualified guy. Now, here, here's a key point. This is, this is very interesting and important. People only buy from you or give you money, in other words, to perform a service when they feel that you can do this better than them when they feel unqualified to do it and you can do it better than them. Mm-hmm. So that's why most businesses try to become the hero. But if mm-hmm. you just present yourself as a guide, you're going to, you're going to have a much better chance of doing that because they feel, ah, this person understands me. Okay. Right. I just wrote it down. I have to be better than them. So, because I thought, okay, so what should I do now? Should I be better? So should I put my um, emphasis, emphasis on being like saying that I'm the leader, I can do the, the best life for you, uh, the live video mm. or whatever, or should I just say, I understand your problem or both? Actually, yeah, exactly. Both. It's about mm. empathy and authority. Empathy okay. and authority are the key words here. If you, if you present empathy, like I understand you, you know, I've been there, I struggled like this already myself, or nobody should have to have to struggle with this particular problem. You know, it's not right, you know, uh, and I've done this, I've done that. I'm qualified. I'm certified. I've helped thousand people. You know, I'm in other words, I have authority here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you look at like Lord of the Rings, okay. who's, who's the hero in Lord yeah. of the Rings? Frodo. Mm-hmm. He has a problem. Who's the guy? Gandalf. His authority. He's old. He knows everything. <laughs> exactly. He gives him a plan. Go to Mordor. Mm-hmm. Calls them to action. Here, get out the door. Now, are they going to end in success or failure? Well, depending on the guide, you want to show them that you're going to be able to help them end in success and avoid the failure. The failure is, is the fear. It's like the salt, you know, you Mm. need a little bit. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. 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 So what is, what comes for, because I think it's also, this is an original, um, picture from the story brand, Donald Miller typology. Um, so why do you think is that avoids failure is, um, at the at the lower right so at more or less at the end it's it, it's could be the end of the story is it is it done on purpose that they placed it there oh, well let's see you see there's a fork in the road here okay the person can go either way yeah so well i don't think that I, I as far as i know there's not a particular reason why you know it's laid out like this it's just kind of a graphic but yeah. Uh, you you want to end your story with both. Mm-hmm. You end in success and you avoided failure. Like the, the narrative sort of ends ends with that. Like wow, we won. Good thing we didn't fail. You know. Like I I can reference one movie I've seen, like a sports movie, for example. I remember watching a sports movie with kids sport uh, playing football when I was young, and uh, you see the the heroes, which were the underdogs, you know, they won, they ended in success. 
And then you see the other team, how they failed and how miserable they were. And then you get an idea of the failure that you're avoiding just by seeing the other team who, who lost. Yeah. And, and that this, builds up to, wow, they won. <laughs> yeah. And what I, what I think is special also about the story brand framework and, you know, you guys, you may not ask, okay, what, why are the two of them? Are, are they so small? And what are these balls there, these orange balls? And so this is such a game changer. If you take this typology, this framework really too hard, because, you know, most of the time we want to depict this picture of I am the hero, I am the best, you know, I have the certif certificates, a PhD, and I helped so many people. And this is the big, nice we were thing. Family owned, founded in 1902. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, people <laughs> are, are not. The worst uh, ones. People are, yeah, exactly. And especially this thing about look at my awards. It's like my awards, and look at all my clients. And so. Happy me. Well, you need that for the authority factor. But if you do that without speaking about the characters, empathizing with their problem, then it falls on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what I also think is a little bit hard to communicate at times is this grain of salt that you just said, like the, or this, uh, this failure that you really have to depict. And also you have to decide, you have to make a decision, actually, who do you want to speak for? What's this particular failure or success that you're going to deliver? And you have to make it concrete in a way, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, there's a saying from Russell Brunson, which I love very much, says, a confused mind always says no. Mm -hmm. And what would you say, Peter, so as like, my guide as my story brand guide so how often should i change my story or is there one story that i have to that i have to cling on forever now i have to make up my mind and then i have to go with this one pitch one story all the time or is there several stories how would you say like in the daily conversation of a of a, of a company that needs to reach out yeah well first of all life is dynamic so if you change and your interests change and your life changes, obviously your, your offering and your business is going to change as well. Uh, bigger companies have an advantage in that they can remain very stable over the years, uh, even though maybe every 10 years, everyone in the company has been recycled, but the company is still the same. Uh, they could take advantage of, of this story brand and and solidify it more because uh, things take time. Trust takes time. People don't just jump on and trust some company to be their guide uh, so fast when it's when it's big things. But personally, I mean, yeah, it's like life is dynamic. If you got to change it, you got to change it. But if you can create something new and clarify this, I'll give a little hint here. Um, People do not like to buy improvement offers. They like mm -hmm. to buy new opportunities because uh, buying an improvement uh, means I failed. I, I, need to, I need something to improve what I already failed at. You know, uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, no, no exact analogy <laughs> comes to mind. But if it's a new opportunity, then you're like, wow, this could actually work for me. You okay. know, uh, let's, let's give this a try. So when you're building out your story brand, if it's a new story brand, you know, you can position yourself as, you know, maybe the other things I did for you in the past failed, but, you know, this is a new opportunity here. I found this new opportunity that I'm going to bring to you guys and something like that. Okay. So, okay. Again, a confused mind. This is the like the idea so don't confuse uh, your clients with saying okay so what i said or what you had yesterday that's not valid any longer so rather give something new so try to kind of get the whole thing on a new track 
if you're doing a story yeah 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 okay. we've got a new opportunity here a new brand spin-off brands i yeah. do a lot of spin-off brands you know build okay up and a, a I, new entity and so as we are so relaxed today uh, at our campfire i just wanted to also <laughs> uh, like ask the, the, the people that are watching us right now and they're watching people are watching us i was always listening to you i was just like some like little moment like looking on my smartphone screen so there are people there um so if you have any question <laughs> on storytelling on the expert peter william about storytelling and how to find your right story it uh, is now the time to get this absolute uh, expert in thinking about your story and also helping your clients to save energy uh, because it's it, a story is an energy mm -hmm. saver it helps your clients mm -hmm. to know exactly in a few seconds what this is all about what you are delivering what product what service yeah. and so also how they can benefit and at the end people love to buy if they know if they get the if they if they get a story that is on track and so the yeah. uh, question is also peter Why is it helpful to get somebody like you or me, like as an outsider, um, to, to get involved in the story? Yeah. Because we don't know so much what the a particular company is doing, somebody could say. Yeah, that, that's actually the advantage. I think everyone knows this, this point when you're too close to something, you don't, you don't see it properly mm. anymore because subconsciously you have all the information about it. So the questions when, when you're trying to write and clarify the story brand, the right questions don't arise, how, what to explain. That's one thing. The other thing is, uh, as Abraham Lincoln once famously said in a letter, he wrote somebody, I would have written you a shorter letter, but I didn't have time. <laughs> so in other words, making copy, making text or scripts or video very short and to the point so that people can consume it uh, is is quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is, of course, why you are here, because especially you, your background is websites. And here, you know, we are often pondering around and think, okay, how can I increase the loading speed of my website yeah. so 0.001 yeah. percent <laughs> more people will see it on google and at the end the question sometimes is a more yeah. has more gravity how can you change the story mm. of your website that somebody this one person mm. that clicks on your website is then saying yes this is exactly yeah. what i need right and so this, this is this the excites changer. me This exactly, exactly. Game changer is the key here because I, I've been making websites a decade or more before I found StoryBrand. And until that point, I wasn't really a fan of websites. It was just kind of like, you have to have one. Otherwise, people don't take your business seriously. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> you don't have a website. You're not a, you're not a real business. But as far as making sales, getting leads getting customers, like websites were useless. And so I was really buying into this uh, method of sales funnels as made popular by the likes of Russell Brunson and ClickFunnels and all of that. Uh, and then when I discovered StoryBrand, I seen, okay, here's the new opportunity, right? Hint, hint. Yes. And I seen that, <laughs> wow, a normal website, just the company's website can become a lead generating funnel. Hmm. And I, I haven't done normal websites since because wow. it's, it's the, it, it's, it's the only way unless you just, I don't know, maybe you have an art gallery and just want to display some pictures, but even for an artist, I've made story brand websites to help them sell more paintings, you know, that, that, wow. yeah, even artists, you know, it's a story who's the artist and who's behind it. I remember my mother once she got a, as a present for Christmas or birthday, a Swiss watch. And the only thing I know about this Swiss watch, because she told me very enthusiastically was that, uh, it came with a little story about how the farmers in the mountains used to make the watches in the winter and that was how the company started 
<laughs> amazing. Isn't that amazing? And I can, I also remember my watch that I got exactly a year ago, which where the company, which is a manufacturer here in Geneva, Switzerland. And uh, so they have made the watch, um, well, that I received the watch a total surprise because it was said that the watch would actually take for a long time. So there is more, more demand than supply. So I ordered it and so I waited. Oh, and so then special. we were just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then they made it. So this is I, your problem. Sorry? You were the hero. You needed a watch and you yeah. had a problem to overcome. You couldn't get the watch. So who was the guide who helped you get the watch? And I think we can all learn from that, that they really made it such a story that I can always share now. So it, the price was absolutely no question anymore. It was that it was available. And so they had it. They surprised <laughs> me that they had it. <laughs> no? And uh, I think what we can learn like from these small boutiques is that they... Um, try also to then create a client conversation and also a client relation with uh, maybe a one-on-one -on -one story <laughs> that they have created. But like last question, because oh, we are like, your time is valuable. And I also, yeah. of course, you as a, as a viewer as well, but um, we are talking about so much about video marketing and video is the new important thing to reach out to gain visibility you know that peter and i are these two marketing guys that fell in love with the idea of like you can just sell more effectively through video so how can we put the storytelling into video so what would be the what would be the most important elements we should should use if we go through this uh, story story brand framework uh, what would you say peter what What's, can we bring from this into video do we have to take it all do i have to take a character has a problem meets a guide who gives them a plan and calls them to action helps to end in success and avoids failure sometimes that is a little <laughs> bit hard in a minute i would say or in 30 seconds what would you say so what is what yeah. are the elements that you need at least uh, first of all, I would say you need, we're, we're often pushing this, you need a quantity of videos when you do video marketing. In other words, you need a lot of videos. So that gives you space to address these different points in different videos. Uh, okay. So backing up before that, you need to get clear about all these different things. And that's something that I go through with uh, clients is we make a story brand script so that all of these items are clear. So let's say one day you're just going to talk about uh, the character and their problems shortly. Then that's very clear for you because you've defined all of these steps. Or one day you're going to talk about the plan, what you do, what you offer. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, sometimes you throw in a call to action. So you're very clear. What is the yeah. call to action? Do I want them to call me or do I want them to download this thing or whatever it is like that. So if you start with a story brand script and you make a, quant a quantity, like a lot of videos, then it's always clear what you're, what you're doing. So your, t so your advice would be for short videos to take one part of the story brand framework and uh, prioritize it for the short video and then go through each part like um, like a, like no, a, not necessarily. I would say more uh, dynamically, you know, like this whole framework, this framework means you can go through the framework in a minute and you can go f through the framework in an hour. Just okay. how much detail do you want to add? You know, I, I can just go through this right now in 30 seconds. I say, hey, you're a small business. You're trying to get more leads, but ads cost a lot of money. Now we over here, we know how to multiply the amount of content you can put out with a video, mm -hmm. uh, which means that if you contact us, so that's the plan, that's the call to action, you're going to be able to get more visibility and more leads without uh, losing all your money on Facebook ads. Right there, I just did the whole story brand wow. framework. Look, okay, so you convinced me. This is amazing. <laughs> This is amazing. So stories still work. So we should get in, we should stay in touch and you should stay 
you should get in touch with Peter. And uh, we are happy, and of course with me as well, if you are interested in how you can really thrive with story marketing. So we help you to develop your story. Oh yeah, it gets warm. It's getting cold these days here as well. How is the temperature? Yeah, here too. Oh. In India, it's, it's, it's cooling off in the evening. I, yeah. I almost had to put on uh, a second shirt over my t-shirt, almost. Sick. And uh, so <laughs> I, I brought my orange uh, pullover. So I'm happy to have it. And also the uh, virtual campfire with you is always feels so warm and cozy. Yeah, I wanted fun, to thank yeah. you for your availability, Peter. So you're so busy and uh, so that we make it happen. Same, Daniel. I appreciate that. We just yeah. keep this going and I'm looking forward to next Friday. We're going to have another surprise topic because, yeah. you know, we are two guys here who have been doing marketing for uh, most of their lives. So we can just go on and on. Absolutely. So <laughs> I already have an idea what we're talking about. The idea could be that's let me think because we have rarely time to discuss it. So we are just somebody is then pushing for the topic. Um, I would say we are always talking about the secrets of marketing success for 2024. So the next year is approaching and there is one channel that I hear over and over is leading when it comes to yeah like benefits that you will receive if you are going in right now and this channel is called linkedin and so this is why either next next time or the or the or, or the time after so i would like yeah. to invite you to talk a little bit more how can you make your stories work on linkedin how can you make video marketing on linkedin because if you're in now uh, so you are bound for big success just because because the 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 platform is thriving right now and not everybody yeah. has used the opportunity of going into linkedin so this would be the topic for next week and yeah, of course send us a question yeah thank you so Wonderful. much okay thank you everyone for watching take care thank you, daniel thank you okay all the best bye bye see you next week bye